What's going on everybody, Josh Pocock here, and recently Anthropic just released Claude Sonnet 3.5 computer use, and we've done videos on this channel covering how to actually set it up using their uh, specific demo version, as well as I showed you how to use agent.exe. So if you want to check out those specific videos, you can check those out. But in today's video, we're going to be looking at a tool that has been around for a while and recently has gotten some really, really cool upgrades. Skyvern, automate browser based workflows using LLMs and computer vision. Skyvern provides a simple API endpoint to fully automate manual workflows on large numbers of websites, replacing brittle and unreliable automation solutions. We're going to show you how you can set it up and self host it for for free let's dive right into it All right, guys, so here is the official Skyvern website. I'll leave links to everything we cover in the description down below. Here is a example of Skyvern in action. Basically, you create specific tasks using prompts and then Skyvern is going to start taking those actions right here, as you can see. And you'll be able to see a specific preview of that job being done, such as filling in forms, doing uh, tedious manual tasks. It is backed by Y Combinator, works on any website, powered by natural language, API driven, infinite scaling, run thousands simultaneously, and no code and low code options. Features you won't find anywhere else, such as capture support, two factor authentication, proxy networks, explainable AI, data extraction. So extract data from workflows in any schema of your choice, including CSV or JSON. So a few different test examples would be streamline invoice retrieval, submit dynamic multi-step forms, automate procurement pipelines, apply to jobs with one click, breeze through government forms, complete workflows in any language. Also too, they have some pretty cool integrations. So they have Pabli Connect, Zapier. Um, a few of these are actually in review, such as Workato, Make.com, InProgress, N8N, and then Fresh Sales. I'm just going to quickly go over how Skyvern works. So it was inspired by the task-driven autonomous Autonomous agent design popularized by Baby AGI and Auto AGI with one major bonus. We give Skyrim the ability to interact with websites using browser automation libraries like Playwright. So Skyvern uses a swarm of agents to comprehend a website and plan and execute its actions. So it has the interactable elements agent. So this agent is responsible for parsing the HTML of a website and extracting the interactable elements. We have the navigation agent. So this agent is responsible for planning the navigation to complete a task. Examples include clicking a button, inserting text, selecting options, etc. Then we have the data extraction agent. So this agent is responsible for extracting data from a website. It's capable of reading the tables and text on a page and extracting the output in a user defined structured format. Then we have the password agent. So this agent is responsible for filling out passwords on forms or websites. We have the two factor authentication agent. So this agent is responsible for filling out two factor authentication on a website. And then we have the dynamic autocomplete agent. So this agent is responsible for filling out dynamic autocomplete complete forms on a website. So a few examples would be address forms, university dropdowns, and more. And here is an example of how it would actually perform a task such as go to Geico and generate an insurance quote. So we have it breaking it down into six different steps and then executing on those specific steps with different agents. And you can watch the demo here as well made by one of the founders, I believe. Now there's a couple different ways to set it up. There's the Docker Compose setup, which is recommended or the full setup for contributors, we're just going to use the Docker Compose setup because it's easiest. So all you're simply going to do is you're going to start off by cloning this repo right here. So you're going to go into your command terminal and you're simply going to run git clone. Okay, once you run that, you're going to simply change directory into Skyvern like so. And then what you're gonna to want to do is you're gonna to wanna to run code dot to open up the repository in something like DS code, or you can open it up in cursor, whatever you want. That's going to open up the repo like this and you're going to want to go to the docker compose.yaml file the main thing you would want to do is scroll down right to here where you'll see the different environment variables so we have the open ai api key right here so if you're going to use open ai api key then you want to paste in the api key here if you're going to use another llm provider 
then you can enable it like so by doing an enable anthropic true and then uncommenting this one too so llm key anthropic claude opus now if you scroll all the way down to here you'll actually see the supported llms as well as the environment variables so you can see here enable open ai true false enable anthropic true false you can see llm key and the supported versions right here for llm so um, you could do oh, these ones right here anthropic cloud sonnet sonnet 3.5 whatever um gpt 4.0 etc so if you are going to change some stuff around you can scroll down there to customize it Okay, once you're done that, you're going to need docker.com as well. So that's one prerequisite. Um, so just go to docker.com if you don't have that already. And then you're going to make sure you're, you have that opened on your desktop and then simply run docker compose up. That is going to start up these containers right here. Once these get spun up, you'll be able to access Skyverm on localhost port 8080. All right, so this is what the Skyverm dashboard looks like. You can see here we can create new tasks. We can check out our previous tasks. We can check out our workflows right here, and we can go into our settings. So in our settings, we can see our environments. We're in local. We can see our organization, and we can see our API key if needed. All right, you simply click reveal, then you'll have it there. And then here are the workflows right here. We'll dive into more of these in just a second. Okay, so, all right, so we're going to start off with the prompts. Go to YouTube, search for Josh Pocock, and get the subscriber count. All right, we're going to run this. All right, so the task is done running. You're going to go to your task right here. So when the task is running, you'll see it right here. You also see your queue task. And then you'll see your task history. So we're going to click on task history right here. We can see the ID, the URL, when it was created, and the completion status. Um, once we click here, we'll see the extracted information. So we can see that it did get the subscriber count, 9,390 subscribers. And we can see the specific actions that it took. So we can see here the search bar is empty. Inputting Josh Pocock will initiate the search process. So it went to YouTube here. It took a screenshot and then the LLM was able to read that. We can see here step two, clicking the search button will execute the search for Josh Pocock. We got, you know, the channel right here. And then it clicked on the channel link to navigate to Josh Pocock's channel. And then the user goal is achieved as a channel page is visible. Extracting the subscriber count is the final step. And then boom. So even if you go here, you'll see a recording. So sometimes this works right here. It's, I guess it didn't work. It's like kind of white right here, but sometimes you do get a recording um, or you should. And then parameters. So you can see here, this is the task URL and input parameters. So Got the URL here, created at, navigation goal. We got navigation payload, data extraction goal, extracted information schema. We can go to diagnostics here. You can see the different steps. All right, step one, step two, step three. And we have info right here. We have annotated screenshots. We have action screenshots right here. All right, element tree, we can see the different elements right here that it got. You can see the HTML element tree that it got right here. We can see the prompt right here, the full entire prompt. Make sure you output valid JSON. We can see the action list right here. We can see the HTML raw. So all the HTML that it got, we can see the LLM request raw. Okay, so you can literally see every single thing pretty much related to this task. So you can copy this curl command to your clipboard. And then if you paste this into your um, command line, you can actually run this task in a, your command line, right? So it will copy and paste all the different uh, variables and everything you need in terms of your API key, the specific task ID, the website URL, the API endpoint, all that different stuff. And you can actually run these in um, your, you can use the API essentially, right? So um, pretty cool stuff. If you do want to use more of the a API, I would suggest checking out the docs here. So the docs are pretty in depth. Um, if you go down here to tasks API, you can see the uh, how to initiate a task, the, the the different headers, the body right here, the different variables. Are you tired of pouring thousands of dollars into appointment setters only to watch leads slip away? Imagine having a team of elite sales agents booking qualified appointments for you around the clock. No more wasted time on training, no more frustration with performance, and no more draining your budget on inconsistent and expensive call centers. Introducing Stride Agents, AI-powered appointment setters that work 24-7, 
never get tired, and book appointments while you sleep. Trained on thousands of successful conversations, our AI agents outperform human teams at just one-tenth of the cost. Join the ranks of businesses that doubled their appointments and booking rates in just a matter of weeks. Don't get left behind in the AI revolution. Visit strideagents.com now and transform your entire sales process with cutting-edge AI technology. It's time to accelerate your stride with AI agents. All right, you also see here that there are Skyvern templates. So you can go ahead and try some of these templates out. And then you could also create your own templates here. So you can see here, we got Josh Pocock, YouTube subscribers. You could create your own templates. If we go to Skyvern templates and run this one, generate an insurance quote from Geico, we could run this. We can see the URL, the navigation goal. We can see advanced settings right here, which will show the payload, all the different payload stuff and parameters. We could go to extraction. We can see the extraction goal, the data schema. We could go to advanced settings. We can see the max steps override, the webhook callback URL, error messages, two-factor uh, verification URL, two-factor authentication identifier. You can even see the curl right here as well as the run button. So if we go ahead and run this, you can see here task has been created. So if we go to our task here, we can now see see that this task is currently being run so you can actually see it loading up Geico right here live which is pretty damn cool we can see it's running and it will progress as things go forward you can see here that it's loading the page so if we check in our docker containers right here we can actually see what is going on we can actually see the feed and the logs of you know scraping website updating steps uh, starting agent successfully went to Geico uh, all the different cool steps here so you can track that as it's running okay so we can see here that it just entered in a zip code and now it is literally filling out the form it clicked on auto okay so we can see the steps here getting filled out so the zip code is required it just entered it in select auto to ensure the quote is for auto insurance not home insurance click start my quote to proceed with generating the auto insurance quote Right now, it looks like our page is loading right here, right? It's asking us for our first name, last name, and date of birth, right? So it's just filling out some dummy data right here. So it has Chris for the first name. Last name, it's putting bacon. Put some fake date of birth right here. Now it's asking for our address. So I have to say, this thing is pretty good. Like, it's getting everything correct, not misclicking anything so far. And it's intelligent enough to put in dummy data. All right, so we can see here it's filling out Garfield Avenue, loading the next page. Yeah, and the good thing about this is that it's infinitely scalable. You can run these tasks and you can run multiple different tasks using a computer and it will perform these tasks. When we were using Claude Computer Use, we were having issues actually filling out a form on my website to book a call. And so far with Skyburn, this is like an 18-step um task right here we're at so far in terms of a form it's actually going to be more and it's literally had no issues it's gone through everything it's getting it correct all right so it was 64 total actions and it actually did up failing just because of a few different things for the application of it entering dummy data that like it wouldn't just let it enter dummy data in the form but other than that it i mean it was a pretty long task as you can see the screen recording is right here um, you know, it asks for things like social security number and stuff. So obviously, um, it's not going to actually be able to just get a quote from using dummy data here, but we can see all the information. So the next thing is the workflow. So if we go to workflows here, you, so you can create workflows, you'll be able to see your workflow runs. If we click over here into a workflow, we can see the past runs, we can edit a workflow. So this is like an editing um, space right here, kind of similar to something like, you know, N8N or make.com it's using react flow so if we click here we can add different nodes we have task block for loop block text bl prompt block send email block file parser block download block upload block all these different actions we can take so for example if we do a task block right here i can name this as get subscribers i could put in the url you could do basic or advanced so if you do advanced right here you'll get some extra things such as extraction limits you know max retries two-factor authentication right here right so pretty cool stuff we'll just stick to basic for now you can add parameters right here so let's say like we wanted subscriber count to add a parameter you can click up here and then click on add parameters so you can click on workflow parameters uh credential parameters uh context parameters all these different parameter options say if you clicked one right here you can add the key description source parameter if needed or you can go here, workflow parameter, you can change it to string, number, boolean, file, JSON, etc. 
you can click up here credential parameter so key description url parameter key collection id all these different options and then a workflow is essentially allowing you to run multiple tasks at once in like a workflow right so if i wanted to get subscribers i could also add a task block right here to do a next action such as you know get the view count of the most recent video or after it goes to to the youtube and gets you know the subscriber count then get the you know time zone i could say go to google and search for time zone and weather in sydney australia all right you also could use for loop blocks which will essentially repeat these uh tasks in the block right here so you could add um, a task like this within the block you could add additional nodes inside this block as well and it will repeat and then we have additional things like i said text prompt you could go here add some prompt add a data schema if needed you go here and i'm not going to go through all these other different nodes right here but you can make some pretty de decently advanced uh, workflows here right so you can save it you can rename it if needed so we'll save this test prompt uh, workflow right here which has two steps and we can go ahead and run it actually we wouldn't need that specific parameter I had so I'm just gonna rerun it now right so I'm gonna run the workflow and the workflow has started if I go back to workflows now I can see workflow runs and we can see that this is running right now if I click on it it opens up the workflow and we can actually see the workflow low running live so we can see it going to youtube right now it's going to make the search also too if you copy this curl right here it will copy the command for you to run the workflow all right now we can see it is searching for the time zone and weather in sydney australia on google so if we scroll down we can see that the youtube task has been complete and now it is running the google task all right so we can click into the individual tasks and see the different tasks being complete okay for some reason the google task didn't work if i click inside i can see here that the search query is already entered clicking the google search button it should run the search previous attempt failed but should try again so it timed out i believe i think it was clicking this button which wasn't searching it so you may have to be a little bit more specific with your prompts as well um you know pertaining to what website you're using and how it's specifically structured uh you know for the screenshots and everything but uh, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I think you get the gist between the workflows, the tasks, and all in all, I think it's a really cool tool. I think it's even cooler if you actually start leveraging the API side of things and you can actually scale automation, different tasks. You could build predefined templates for your specific use case. And I think you could actually make um, some really cool things happen with this. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Let me know how you think this compares to Claude Sonnet's computer use. And some of the other tools we also covered on this channel, such as Agent Q, Agent E. If you haven't seen those videos, check those out on my channel as well to see what is the best browser-based automation tool leveraging AI. Other than that, guys, if you're new here, we upload videos every single day on AI, automation, business, marketing, sales, etc. So if you like that type of content and you got some value here, make sure to smash the like button, comment down below, and subscribe to stay up to date with the daily uploads. Also too, guys, if you haven't already joined our free community, stridecommunity.com, I'll leave a link down below so you can join our free Facebook group and Discord channel. And then if you want help growing your business and accelerating your stride, book a call with the link down below to speak to myself. We can go over a custom growth plan for your specific business and see if there's any way to scale your business by implementing AI systems and cutting edge marketing strategies. Other than that, guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.